Welcome to Crotone Entertainment. I'm Chris. And I'm Bree. And I love the smell of bat guano in the morning. That what? We're painting a range ruler for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Um, this is the range five ruler. And I decided I wanted to do this like a fireball, which of course bat guano is a key ingredient. In. For, yes, for uh, those of you who play D&D. I also decided that uh, wet blending is not off base from our comic book style painting that we're doing on this. So yeah. this is a spectrum of yellows and oranges and reds that we're going to be doing this fireball on. But you broke your rule. What are you talking about? I thought we were mostly doing Vallejos. Oh, cool. son of a dick. I got to repaint this thing. <laughs> Oh, this video is ruined. Well, it's not a it's not a miniature. It's a it's a range ruler. So we'll we'll call that okay. Oh my goodness. So we're gonna we're gonna tinker with a little wet blending. Um I am not a huge wet blender. I don't do it a lot. It is not that difficult to do on a flat surface. It gets more complicated on textured surfaces. Uh I did try a couple techniques here. I thought it might be easier to show it to you this way, but then it ended up taking so long to dry, I got irritated and just started going with it. So what I did here is I took um the white end of my spectrum. You can use any whites you want, you can go up to any any color you want. You could theoretically do this with any shades as long as they kind of bleed into each other. So I did my deepest red on one end. I did my white on the other end. And then I wanted to let them dry. I wanted there to, and I know traditionally you'd be like, why would you dry that? You want to wet blend it with stuff. I, I wanted a crisp transition line kind of at first. Right. Um, and then I'm going to take my next shade of red and I'm going to do a little further on here. Uh, I, I quickly decided I didn't want to wait for these to dry. So I just started saying, screw it, let's go, and let's go do some wet blending. Now, there's really only one technique to show you here. It's not hard on a flat surface. Is this the best wet blending you're ever going to see? Absolutely not. I barely ever do this. I think the last time I've even done wet blending was probably over a year ago, and, and I didn't do it on much. Um, but basically, we're taking some white. While, while the white's still wet, we're taking this, this yellow, and we're going to bleed them into each other. Um, and I hadn't quite fully decided to do that yet, but I'm going to kind of start doing it here so that we got that third shade of red, which in our case was evil sun, scarlet, that brightest shade of red that we got. Um, and then we've got our Mephiston red in the middle and we've got our corn red on the end. And what we want to do is we want to paint a large area that's going to predominantly be that color. And then while both paints are still wet and we've got a lot of water, or you can use a medium on your brush where they kind of meet, we kind of blur them together. And we just, we're just running our brush. Now I ran my brush. I'm going to call this horizontally, even though from the depiction of the camera, it's vertical. Uh, I'm calling it horizontal as if I was holding the range ruler in my hand. Uh, I did try doing this vertically, kind of in an up and down motion. If I was holding this up in my hand and, and the five was, was readable in my face and I did it in a horizontal fashion, I will tell you I had more success with the horizontal fashion. So I'm only getting the insights here. This raised area is going to stay black because we're going to go paint that later. But you see, we're kind of, we kind of got our orange up there and now we're crossing into that red. And we just kind of, we're, we're pulling some of the red into the orange. We're pulling some of the orange and the red, and then we're praying that that's going to blend together when it dries. It's like uh, an ombre. Again, this is not the most advanced technique for wet blending. This is very, very basic wet blending. This is just a general concept of what is wet blending. It's when we have literally two wet hues that we're kind of pulling together to create a transition. There are specific mediums that you can buy for this. There are specific techniques. Some people do a two brush technique to do this. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on with wet blending if you want to explore with it, but I would recommend if you want to tinker with it to feel what it feels like for you, start with something like this. Uh, so again, we got a lighter orange. It bleeds into the darker orange. Same thing, right where they meet and they're still wet. We kind of just kind of bring the colors together, not across the whole thing. I want that lighter orange on one end. I only want it kind of where they're meeting. That's that's the only place I want it. Mm -hmm. I see this. And that's, I mean, there's not much else to say about this. Uh, if you've ever thought about wet blending, try it on a big flat piece like this. You could even just try this on a, on a piece of plastic you have laying around the house or a piece of cardboard you have laying around the house. Just, just try it out. See if it's for you. Uh, you may want to apply it to other miniatures as you go forward. I didn't mind doing it on a range ruler here. I'm too lazy to do true wet blending on a small miniature, but on a big flat uh, game piece like this, because it's not even a miniature. If I screw this up, who cares? This is just a measuring stick. And honestly, there aren't that many things we've encountered so far in Marvel Crisis Protocol that have range five. I'm sure there's plenty, and I'm sure somebody who plays more than we do is going to go, well, what about X, Y, and Z? Well, I don't know about that yet. I'm sure it's we out there. We haven't bought that yet. I acknowledge that it's out there. There's not a lot we've dealt with that's range five. And you're just doing the same thing across the way. You'll see I added a darker yellow, and I pulled it into the orange. Now I go back to that light yellow, and I'm going to pull that light yellow into the, you know, the slightly darker yellow. 
I did add some more white so I could pull the yellow into the white at the end. And really, you're not going to truly see what this is going to do until it fully dries. But even looking at the wet paint here, you can kind of see how the colors are bleeding moderately seamlessly into each other. This, the, the harshest transition is the white into the yellow. I probably could have used one or two more lighter yellow. Oh, there's the dog. He's dying. The dog is choking on something. No, he just has a wheeze. Yeah, he's, he's old and he wheezes. So that's the, that's the, the harshest right there is where the white goes into the yellow. Um, and then we've got our Abaddon black. We're going to paint all the raised areas black. I was going to do like a cool smoky effect and maybe even wet blend some black to some gray on this. Um, but then I decided that this is Emmett. Really? You're okay. Our dog might be dying. He's thinking. No, nah, he does this all the time. He's getting older and this is, this is what he does. Uh, so I thought about wet blending this black into like some grays to kind of make like a cool smoky effect. And then I remembered, Chris, what are you doing? This is just a measuring stick. So this is so this is going to go alongside this is going to go alongside our uh, our range four one that we did kind of inspired by the Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give this one a pass on not using Vallejos only because I was dealing with wet blending and I have more shades of reds and orange from other manufacturers right yeah. now than I do from Vallejo. And it's not a game piece; it's a it's a measuring stick. But it's still going to look cool when you drop this on the table much cooler than that gray plastic that it comes with. And it's just yeah. going to be fun to look at. And there you go. I went a little heavy handed on some of the paint. It did create a little chunkiness in a couple of the spots, but ultimately you got a pretty good looking range ruler. The colors go moderately seamlessly into it. And you've got a piece you can be proud of and have fun playing with on your table. There you go. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more content, hit the bell button for notification and try our wet blending.